Hello and welcome to another edition of Traveler Stories. Joining us again is Joseph Rosimich, who goes by Journey Joe. Welcome back, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Journey Joe recently took a seven-week road trip on Route 66, and I believe we're up to week number four. Before we begin, where did we leave off on our previous episode? Uh, we were in Gallup, New Mexico. Um, I had uh, checked into the El Rancho Hotel, that beautiful place, um, and um, this was to be, we, we, it was my walking day, so I was walking down Route 66 um, from the El Rancho Hotel. <clears throat> the route itself is a very busy road, and I thought to myself, there must be there's got to be more to this someplace. And I just got this inspiration to walk left one block and I ended up on Cole Street. So hmm. this picture here, this is a corner of Cole Street. And I don't know, it's kind of it's close to the Amtrak station, like okay. one block south. But uh, this is the old historic section of Gallup with, you know, the commerce section where people are walking and lots of shopping and if I'm not mistaken, that might be Brick Road there. No, well, there's brick sidewalks. Anyway, um, so that is uh, <clears throat> historic downtown Gallup. And I stopped at a place for breakfast while I was there. And, uh, or was it lunch? I don't know. But at this place here was called the Railway Cafe. Very nice place. Hmm. Okay. So I had lunch there and, you know, relaxed, got out of the sun for a while and, um, you know, continued my walk. And, um, I ended up at this place. Um, this is a nutrition store. Okay. I, I was, it was one of those deals where I looked on Google maps and there was something that said nutrition store and there it was right there. So I walk over there and I walked in and, um, there was an older fellow there and uh, he had a name tag on. So I knew he worked there. And uh, I said, uh, <clears throat> do you have any probiotics? Somebody told me that I should be taking more probiotics. Hmm. And he goes, oh, is it your lucky day? <laughs> and he started telling me all the stuff about probiotics and prebiotics. And man, he just gave me the whole history and the whole story. And and we, you know, he took me to another place and he told me another story. This, this is the guy that owns the place. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but, um, oh, he was just, he was just so happy to talk to me. And, you know, there's people are waiting to check out and I'm telling him, go check these people out, you know, and he'd check them out and he'd come back and talk to me some more. And, um, then he, uh, he actually gave me a bottle of these probiotic capsules very expensive, hmm. but he, the reason he gave them to me was because you take one a day and it was too close to the expiration date. But, uh, you know, again, these kinds of things, you don't get this on the interstate. Right. So when you, uh, you know, you go in the town and you walk around and uh, it's another one of the reasons why I set up this trip so that I would stay, try to stay at least two nights everywhere I went. That way I could get out and walk. And when you get out and walk, that's when you have experiences like this. An hour in the nutrition store. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, I don't remember much else of that day. Um, probably just sat around and relaxed, walked around some more. <clears throat> and then um, went to bed for the night. And then the next morning... Uh, and I woke up and uh, I went outside and I took one more picture of the uh, El Rancho Hotel in uh, another lesson that I learned from photographer Efren Lopez is this thing he calls the blue hour. Okay. The blue hour is, is the hour before sunrise when the sky just starts to get a little bit of light to it and it's very blue. Everything is blue. So I went out there and I took a picture of the El Rancho Hotel and uh, 
it's a nice picture. And then I went in and finished my packing and got myself some breakfast and walked out to the car and I was putting some bags in the trunk of my car and a very interesting thing happened to me. What's that? Behind me, I heard a lady crying and I turn hmm. around and I look and there's this lady walking towards me, very nice looking, dressed in Native American, uh, you know, clothing. Um, did not, you know, she was, she was young. She had dark hair and, but she was just crying her eyes out. She's walking mm -hmm. toward me and, and, uh, she says, please, please, you know, and I says, what's the matter? What's the matter? And she was trying to talk to me while, you know, she was crying and I couldn't understand what she was saying. I think maybe she was like talking in her native language, but I just could not understand oh. her. So I said, I said, are you sick? And she says, no. I said, are you hungry? She said, yes. So I said, okay, come on, let's go inside and I'll buy you some breakfast. So um, I walked inside and she walked in there very fast. So the first thing I noticed then was that, okay, um, she's been here before, she knows her way around, but she walked in and then um, <clears throat> she walked into the restaurant and you know when you walk into a restaurant you're supposed to stay at the you know the reception podium mm -hmm. until they seat you but she walked right in and so i went and i followed her and i says we're supposed to wait until she's you know seats us and she walked back with me and we waited there and the receptionist sat us down and she's still crying just crying mm. uncontrollably um so, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, put you in this situation, you know, that you're in the situation and everything is happening just like real time right now. What do I do next? What do I do next? Um, so I told her order whatever you want. And, um, you know, she, you know, she ordered, it looks seemed like she knew exactly what she wanted. She ordered, you know, scrambled eggs, pancakes, French, you know, fried potatoes, toast, and orange juice. Hmm. Um, and then she was, she was crying. So I'm asking her some more questions. I says, are, you know, are you, do you have a drug problem? And she said, no. And I said, are you homeless? And she said something that was unintelligible. And I says, why are you crying? And she says, nobody wants me. And, mm -hmm. um, I was just totally puzzled by this, this whole thing. I mean, she did not look like a homeless person. Usually homeless people, um, you know, they're a little bit more disheveled than this, but, uh, she was just crying. And by this time, everyone else in the restaurant is looking at us, you know, and I'm beginning to worry that, geez, are these people thinking that I'm hurting her? And I wanted to hold her hands and tell her everything was okay. Um, but again, all of this is happening real time and you're sitting here with a perfect stranger and she's crying and, um, you know, at, at times like that, I just kind of pray to myself, Lord, give me the inspiration to do the right thing. So, uh, her breakfast came and, uh, <clears throat> I paid for it and, um, she got up and she said, thank you. And, uh, she walked out of the building and out of away and out of my life. So did I get scammed for 20 bucks? You know what? I don't know. And I don't care. I really right. don't. Mm -hmm. um, if she's out there scamming people, she'll have to answer for that when her day comes. Mm -hmm. But for me, again, you can't just turn your back on a crying lady. You, you got to do no. something. And mm -hmm. again, I did that. I stepped out of my comfort zone, out of my bubble, and I tried to do something good. And again, you don't get this on the interstate. And these are the kinds of things that I remember from my trip. So I just yeah. thought I would pass that story along to you.
Well, and you you did what you thought that you were led to do. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Okay, so moving on from the El Rancho, got myself checked out, headed on down the road. And my next stop was the Jackrabbit Trading Post uh, with their iconic sign. And of course, I had to take a picture of my car in front of the iconic sign. Um, I had to take a selfie of myself in front of the big rabbit. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I did a little bit of shopping in there. Now, I took this picture of a, this is actually a picture of a picture. I do not know the lady in that picture or the car, but um, she looks very much like a friend of mine from Springfield, Missouri, hmm. whose name is, oh man, I can't <laughs> think of her name. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not the only one. Okay. <laughs> oh, it'll, it, it'll come to you at 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. But any, yeah, I, I, I took a picture of this and I put it on Facebook and I said, that's you, isn't it? You know, and she didn't <laughs> respond, but it looks just like her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this is the uh, turquoise room at the La Posada in Winslow. Hmm. Whenever I pass through Winslow, I always stop at the La Posada, whether I stay there or not, because the place is just so peaceful and serene. And uh, so I had breakfast at that table there. And then, yeah, I walked around a little bit, took a few pictures. You know what else is nice about this place here, the La Posada Hotel? It's also the Amtrak station. Uh, which means you can, uh, if you want to take an Amtrak train out west, you get off at Winslow and you walk in and you're in the hotel and you can check in. No, I've thing. never heard of that. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. The, hmm. This is the Amtrak station and a hotel. So you can get off the train hmm. and check into your room, which I've yeah, done that's a few nice. times. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everyone has to take that picture. Yeah. Needs no introduction. I spent uh, oh, the better part of a day just hanging around Winslow. I don't think I, I didn't stay in Winslow, Arizona, but uh, I visited there for a while. There's another picture of the corner. Mm -hmm. This is that restaurant on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. It's uh, right across the street from the statue that everybody stands next to. Okay. Um, usually stop in here and grab a bite to eat or at least get an ice cream cone. Mm hmm Now this place here, I got to put my glasses on. That is the uh, Aspen Inn and Suites. This is where I stayed in Flagstaff. That was my next stop for okay. a couple of nights. I stayed here in Flagstaff. Uh, it's just outside of town, uh, not quite, you know, in the town there. It was a little bit outside. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the lobby. Interesting paint, isn't it? It kind is neon, but it's paint. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So again, this is another, you know, restored, reconditioned, you know, uh, second generation motor court. I call it second generation because it's got two floors. Still mm -hmm. has exterior hallways and doors, but it has two floors. So uh, I stayed here. Um, this is in uh, Williams, Arizona. That is the train to the Grand Canyon. My wife and I want to do that, but we've never done it yet. Oh, it's nice. Um, uh, it's it's an all day trip. You you uh, you. Go to the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel, um, and right next to the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel, there's a gift shop, and then there's a, uh, you know, the train station where you buy your tickets for this trip. And you can either make it a day trip, or you can actually, if you want, you can take this up to the Grand Canyon. You could stay overnight or a couple nights, and then a couple hmm. a day or two later, you could take the train back to Williams. 
Well, that's neat. Yep. No, mm-hmm. that's some, that's on my bucket list. Haven't done it yet. Yeah. There's another picture of the Grand Canyon train. And uh, this place here, I took a picture of it. This is, uh, this is where I booked myself a couple of nights, not for my westbound trip, but on the way back on my eastbound trip. Um, this is, a, this is a, a little cabin uh, right you know, across the alley from the hotel on the corner. The next picture might be a picture of the hotel on the corner. Uh, nope, nope. These are, this. okay, these two pictures. This is Ash Fork, Oklahoma. It's another, no, Ash oh, Fork, okay. Arizona, excuse me. Ash Fork, mm-hmm. Arizona. Um, another one of those bypass towns. And mm-hmm. uh, believe it or not, at the at the end of this, dead end section of road here there's a museum it's a very nice museum um Hmm. it is actually in a uh what used i don't think i took any pictures in there or that they're out of order but that was a uh, originally the building was a maintenance shed for the equipment used to build the interstate highway oh that's rather ironic yeah stayed vacant for a while and now it is it's the museum in ash fork hmm. and, uh, so that's an abandoned section of route 66 this is uh seligman arizona mm-hmm. i believe that is a picture of the snow cap yeah that's angel delgadillo's place yeah i think that's the snow cap yeah across the street yeah. from the snow cap is the aztec motel that's another place I stayed on my eastbound trip. I didn't stay there this time, but I took a picture of it. Just kind of stopped there to have a look around. And uh, this is the Roadrunner Cafe, which is next door to that Aztec motel. Hmm. And in the Aztec motel, they call it the Motel and Creative Space. So this is their creative space. They actually took a couple of motel rooms and, you know, knocked the walls out in between them and just turned it into a lobby or a lounge. It's a very nice oh, that's place. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, interesting. We tried to get our room reservation for actually next year in May for the fun run. Um, and they were already booked up. So this, this place that's here. A, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. So get your reservations in advance. So it was like, I don't know, nine, 10 months in advance and they were already full for the fun run. Wow. Yeah. So uh, this was highly recommended, but we didn't get there in time. So, so maybe next time. Where's this chandelier at? This is in the, the same room as the last picture. This is oh, in the okay. creative space of the Aztec motel. Hmm. I thought it was, not very often you see a um, chandelier in a motor court motel, so I took a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. This, if I'm not mistaken, is Kingman, Arizona. Oh, yeah. Mural. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just parked the car there and took a picture. Okay. Um, we all know where you're at now because of the burrows. That's right. This is Oatman. So um, Mm -hmm. I drove into Oatman and uh, (laughs) this donkey knew how to open a door. You believe that? (laughs) Yeah, he just pushed his nose down on the handle and he could open the door. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yes, I I went in there and I had a, I can't remember, an ice cream or a Coke or something. Mm -hmm. And I just watched. Okay. So, um, now, now I'm in Lake Havasu, Arizona. And the reason ah. I went to Lake Havasu is because all this time that I've been, you know, uh, the last week I was in, you know, Texas and New Mexico. If you remember back last summer, <clears throat> there was a very rare tropical storm in California. Okay. It was huge. Okay. Because I remember looking at this thing and they were they were showing this tropical storm it's 500 miles wide wow it's only 
250 miles from Kingman, Arizona to Los Angeles, believe it or not. Hmm. So this thing is huge. And they're showing, you know, roads are washed out and torrential rains and all that. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm going to make it to California or not. Right. So I thought, well, I'm going to take a little detour and I'm going to cool my heels for a few days and wait and see what happens with the storm. And that's what I did. I booked myself a place for three nights in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. A little place called Island Suites. Very economical for such a um, nice place as Lake Havasu City. So I stayed here for a few nights, three nights. I've never been there, but I've wanted to go see the London Bridge. Yeah, the London Bridge. Um, now, there's a couple of there's it's an island right so there's lake havasu city and mm -hmm. then the, you drive over the london bridge to this island and then there's more hotels and stuff on the island oh okay i didn't yes. know that okay. yes there's high and uh, this one uh there i think it's i forgot what it's called it's called the carriage house or something like that but that next picture that is a replica of uh the queen or Queen Elizabeth's um, wedding carriage, something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Really beautiful thing. And um, if I'm not mistaken, the next picture is a f new friend of mine. That is, oh God, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember names. Diane. That's Diane. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll okay. tell you the story about Diane. Okay. All right. Um, back at the... Uh, um, the hotel I was staying at, the Island Suites. Right. Across the street from the hotel, there's a auto parts store, um, uh, Rock Auto or something like that, you know. Okay. And it was one of my days staying there. It was, you know, it was real hot that day. And, um, I had taken the car for a little drive around the island and I came back and the low washer fluid light comes on in the car. <clears throat> so I thought, all right, I guess I better go buy some washer fluid. Hey, now how nice. There's an auto parts store right across the street. So mm -hmm. I walked across the street into the parking lot of this auto parts store. And in the parking lot, there's a, a lady, she's trying to get the trunk of her car open and she's crying. No, so no. The second time I come across a lady who's crying. So I walk over there and this wasn't just any car, mind you. This was a 1994 12 cylinder Jaguar convertible. Beautiful. Wow. Car. Hmm. And she's, she can't get the trunk open and she's crying. And I said, what's the matter? She goes, I can't get this trunk open and never used to have to use the key, but I haven't driven this car in five years. My husband left it to me when he died. And I just figured, why was it, you know, why am I not driving this car and I can't get the trunk open? And um, she would just, you know, I said, well, let me get you some help. So I went inside and got some help and she figured out how to get the trunk open. And so I went to buy my window washer fluid and you could only buy it in a gallon, right? A big gallon mm -hmm. jug. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, you know, and I know the car isn't going to take a whole gallon of window washer fluid. And I got no place to put a gallon jug. The trunk of my Corvette is full. There's no right. Right room, you know, I isn't even room for a refrigerator magnet back there. <laughs> so I got this idea. So I walked back out there and she's still out there. And I says, uh, well, I'll tell you what. I've got this gallon of window washer fluid. I can't use it all. How about if I put some in my car and I'll give you the rest? Oh, that would be very nice. How nice. I says, all right, just drive your car across the street. I'm staying at the motel across the street. So she drove her Jaguar across the street and uh, I gave her the window washer fluid and we started a conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up... Uh, you know, spending the next hour or two with her just talking. We went, sat down in the hotel lobby and 
I think they were still serving raisin bran. It wasn't 11 o'clock in the morning yet. So, uh, mm. you know, we had some orange juice and a couple of snacks and talked some more. And uh, then uh, she asked me, well, what are you doing for dinner? <laughs> and I says, I'm not doing anything for dinner. It's just so she told me about a nice restaurant and, and uh, we decided we would meet. Okay. So uh, I made a new friend. Um, we did not go out for dinner that night. I gave her a call and uh, she wasn't feeling very good. Remember, it's, um, you know, it's 116 degrees out there during the day. And, you know, wow. by the end of the day, a couple of senior citizens, well, you're kind of wiped out, you know. Yeah. So we didn't have dinner that night. But, I, you know, I says, well, why don't we do breakfast tomorrow morning? She said, sure. So I called her up the next morning and. Um, left a message and uh, went about my business, starting to pack my bags and such. And um, then the phone rings. You know, the hotel has an old wall phone, right? Okay. So I answered mm -hmm. the phone and uh, it's Diane. She's down there in the lobby. Come on, let's go get <laughs> breakfast. Okay. I have to ask twice. So uh, <laughs> went down there. I met Diane and uh, we took Angel out for a ride. She took me to this hotel here where this carriage is. And she showed me all around the island. She had she lived on the island for a while. She's got another mm. place now. So uh, she took me around, showed me Lake Havasu City, and uh, then we went and had a nice breakfast and a little bit more conversation. And then uh, it was time to check out, and uh, we gave each other a nice hug and and uh, said goodbye and uh, mm. made myself another friend. Well, that's and great. Was on my way. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. You don't get yeah. this on the interstate. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I Not recognize this. her. Yeah, that's Miss Nicole. Yeah. You know her? I know Miss Nicole at Roy's. Yeah. Yes, at Roy's Motel. And um, when I got there, of course, it was a, a bit of an ordeal to get there because. <clears throat> roads in a lot of the route 66 in california is closed you know from bridges mm -hmm. washing out or whatever roads washing out but especially you know, after you, that storm that you talked about yeah that too that too so um went uh so i made my way to roy's and uh nicole was out in the parking lot cooking burgers and hot dogs mm. and i was hungry so i stopped and um Nicole told me about how people come to Roy's motel and they like to stand out there in the middle of the road and take pictures in front of the Route 66 badge. Mm -hmm. and this particular section of the highway, for those of us you know too, this is out in the middle of nowhere, right? Very much Roy's so. Motel is in the middle of a long straightaway of nowhere. Okay. Yeah. So people going down this section of Route 66, you know, unless if they're not tourists, they're hauling tail. Okay. They're flying. Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous for people to be standing out there and get their picture taken. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she made this sign and she, she was, you know, in the process of putting that sign out there to discourage people from taking their picture out there on the road where these cars drive really really fast yeah That's yeah i was it. trying to figure that sign out now i understand yeah you don't uh -huh. stay in, on the road to take photos that's pretty good i like that yeah, yeah that's what that was about <laughs> there's another picture of roy's yeah yeah a couple more pictures of roy's you can, i mean yeah it's out in the middle of nowhere isn't it there's nothing yeah. else there and you know it's interesting people in airplanes actually land and taxi over there for photos as well yeah, it's yeah. that empty. Mm -hmm. Now here is, um, I think eventually that building in the foreground is going to be a gift shop. <clears throat> and then in the background, uh, you can see some um, tourist cabins under construction. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they're going to open, I have no idea. Um, but that's what I saw there. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I. The reason I took this picture is because I know a guy and his name is Chuck Walla. 
Oh, okay. I had no so, idea what we were talking or looking so at. I was going to send that to him to tease him. I, I guess <laughs> okay. that's what that's the name of the lizard, you know. So okay. Anyway, these are pictures from a museum. If I'm not mistaken, we're in San. We might be in San Bernardino now. Okay, I've heard they've got a great museum, but I've not been there. Yeah, because when I left. Lake Havasu City, I went to San Bernardino. What does that say? Mm -hmm. uh, San Bernardino County Museum. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. yes, I have, you know, I have gone to San Bernardino. Um, I've checked, I've probably checked in already and this is the next day. So I'm at the San Bernardino County Museum. This is the, uh, that's the modern hotel that I stayed at. I did not stay at a, at a vintage motel in San Bernardino. I stayed at a modern place. Mm -hmm. Another picture of shadows and staircases. I like shadows and mm. staircases. Mm -hmm. This is at the San Bernardino Museum. Now, okay, so here's a, there's a story here. Okay. Uh, this, this fellow's name is Doug. So I was on my way I believe you know, I was on, you know, the long long trip from San Bernardino to Santa Monica, which is, um, it's 70 miles of stoplights every quarter mile. Go and you stop, you go and you stop, you go and you stop. But I was driving along and, you know, for a couple hours <clears throat> and I got to this town called Endora. Hmm. And, uh, I'm went past the coffee shop and I thought, Ah, coffee sounds good. So I came to the next stoplight, pulled into the left turn lane, you know, and I was going to turn around in this parking lot. So I got my turn arrow and I turned and I pull into this parking lot. Just as I pull into the parking lot, coming in the opposite direction, a bus pulls up to the bus stop and stops. And this fellow comes running out of a grocery store with a bag. Mm. And he's trying to catch up to the bus, but he's got a limp. So he's oh. kind of running and he's limping, you know, trying to catch up to the bus and the bus drives away and he just mm. stops and he stands there in the middle of the parking lot looking dejected just at the same moment that I'm driving past. Mm. <laughs> Again, you know, th these things, they just happened to me. I don't know why. So I rolled down the window and I said, uh, well, where are you headed? And uh, he says, uh, well, I was just going, going to get on that bus and go a couple miles down the road, you know, to get some coffee and go home. And I said, well, it just so happens that I'm going for coffee, too. So why don't I give you a ride? He says, hmm. no, you'll, you'll have to move all this stuff around and put the map and the cooler on your lap and all that, you know. So, well, you know, he, he looks at me and he says, why are you doing this? And I said, because I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. he said, okay. So he got in the car with me and uh, we turned around and we headed back to um, not the coffee shop that I was looking at, but the mm -hmm. one that he wanted to go to. It's his favorite place. Okay. And uh, he bought me breakfast. Mm. <laughs> and we sat there and we shot the breeze for about an hour and a half. He's a retired surfer dude. Mm. And, uh, you know, he, when he when he retired, he came back to his hometown of uh, Andorra, and again I made another friend yeah. on Route sixty six, <laughs> just because I was just in the right place at the right time. Yeah, how special! Yeah. Yep. Now this picture, this is the. This is not the the. Uh, well known, familiar end of Route sixty six. This is the official end of Route 66, and I cannot read the street sign anymore. But can I uh, can I guess is Mel's restaurant on this intersection? Yes, yes. We ate breakfast there, and a lot of people consider this to be the true, correct end of Route 66. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Olympic and something, but I don't. I, I I can read Olympic, but I don't know what the other street is. Yeah. Okay, so here's this is Mel's. So I went in, I, I took that picture, and then I, because I, I actually parked the car already 
and I walked here from mm -hmm. my hotel. My hotel was was right there by the pier, and this is just a few blocks away. So okay. I walked over to Mel's, and I got myself something to eat. I like to take a picture of a nice, colorful meal. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that a chicken salad sandwich? That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And some fruit. Yeah, I was eating healthy. Okay, so there's me. I'm holding the card from Carrie, and it's a picture of uh, Carrie in her car. And also, I have uh, the prayer card from Marty. Those were the two spirits that I took. Oh, you. remember I told you about that? Yeah, week one or week two. I think week two you told us about that. But yes, week. I Week two of the video is week one of your travels, I think. Yeah. Right. Illinois, right. I promised, Illinois I promised, correct? Yeah. Yes. I promised Mary and I promised Carrie and Marty, who passed away before they could make the Route 66 trip, that I would take them with me on my Route mm. 66 trip. So here I am at the end. Carrie right. and Marty, you made it. Congratulations. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, when we stopped there um, on our trip, we were with some friends, and one of the couple's names was Mike and Karen. Anyway, um, Mike and I both bought a souvenir license plate inside Mel's, and the license plate says, this car has traveled the entire Route 66 Chicago to Santa Monica. So we bought those license plates inside Mel's, and then in the parking lot, we installed them on our cars. So that's what I remember about Mel's. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. There's another picture of, uh, um, let's, let's see, that's Carrie's car. In the middle is Carrie's car in Pontiac. And mm -hmm. uh, the heart, that's a Valentine card that Carrie sent me. And then on the left there is uh, Marty's prayer card. And there they are at Mel's restaurant. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> So we had breakfast there before we went to the pier. Yeah. Yeah. Another picture. That's Mel's. Okay, so now <clears throat> this is the following morning. You can see the long shadows. So this is mm -hmm. early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got up first thing in the morning and I walked across the street from my hotel and took a couple of pictures at the Santa Monica sign. Mm -hmm. someone, somebody took this picture of me. That's not a selfie, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a selfie because mm -hmm. it's backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the most famous signs along the entire route. Yeah, yeah. And this is the this is the picture of. When you, you stand there, you walk all the way to the end of the, or, you know, you, you stand there at the pier and you look, are we looking eastbound here? Mm, I think you're look. you might be looking west. Looks like it could be the ocean out there. I'm not sure, but I, I, know, I guess I don't really know. I guess I don't know. I'm not sure either, but I know what, what I, what I, what, what I like to do is I like to walk all the way out to the end of the pier and then look back eastbound mm -hmm. and just imagine driving all the way back to Chicago. Mm. Yep. Yep. So these are just some, these are some pictures of us uh, in Santa Monica. Took my walk around. Well, this would be the end of the pier, I believe. Yes. Yeah. This is the pier where you walk up to the, Mm -hmm. Top there, and that's where all the people throw out their fishing poles. Mm -hmm. and there's another picture of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, I, believe, I, I believe I had gone back to the room and you know changed into some cooler clothing and went back there during the day because if those mm -hmm. first pictures were early in the morning, these look like afternoon pictures. Yep, yep. <clears throat> so that's so there at this time i've got marty and carrie at the iconic end of route 66 so they, yep. their spirits got to be in both places <laughs> that's great yeah okay we already saw that picture 
I tried. I thought I got out all the duplicates, darn it. Okay. This is an interesting photo. Explain this one. Okay. You, um, you walk off the pier and you walk down the, whatever that road is. I'll call it, I'll call it Lakeshore Drive. I don't know what else to call it. It kind of runs right along the, the waterfront there. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a nice picture of, uh, of a walkway there. Hmm. You know, that's why I took a picture of it. Yeah. I like that. You know, that and, and, you know, that's the beach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's my picture from standing at the end of the pier, looking East and mm -hmm. telling myself this goes all the way to Chicago. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, uh, there's a story behind this picture here. This is a, this is a homeless fellow. Now in Santa Monica around the pier, there are multitudes of homeless folk. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know, um, they're quite hostile. So mm. I didn't have any, uh, friendly interactions with homeless folk in Santa Monica. <clears throat> I did whatever I could to avoid them. Um, this fellow here was actually, um, uh, he, you know, th th he's right in the middle of the entrance exit of the parking lot for the hotel and he wouldn't move, you know, hmm. just making it difficult for people to head hmm. in and out. But yeah, that was, um, uh, you know, I don't like to talk bad about any city. I love cities. I'm not afraid of cities. Um, there's homeless people in every city and town, but I, one of the things I had to be, you know, be careful of was, uh, you know, the, the street folk in, in, uh, Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. Now that, okay. So that next picture, I think, okay. So at this point in time, I have turned around mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that you know, there are milestones in my trip is when I, uh, is when I turn around, I did not take a picture of the moment when I climbed down off the pier and I walked on the sand out to the ocean and I stood ankle deep in the ocean. And that's when I knew it was time to turn around. So mm. now from this point on, I'm going back the way I came. Okay. Uh, so, um, so I checked out that morning I drove around, got, managed to get my car around the homeless guy in the wheelchair who wouldn't get out of my way. And I got on the road and for the first couple hours, it was a nice drive. And then, oh man, did it get hot and the car is mm. overheating, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, um, I had booked the uh, wigwam in Rialto. It took me a good five, six hours to get there, right? Stop and go every quarter mile, stop and go. Hmm. And I got there and this place was such a wonderful oasis. Okay. Just imagine you're driving in this car all day. Most of the day it's 110 degrees and most of the day the air conditioner is not working. Uh, oh man, was I hot. I was, I was melting and you get to this place and it's perfectly manicured. The grass is green and it's got a swimming pool. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, oh, <laughs> I didn't take any pictures of that swimming pool, but oh, did it feel good. This place, this uh, wigwam in Rialto, it is, it is an oasis not to be missed. Yeah. We stopped and it was in the middle of the day, so we did not get a room. But like I said, the outside was just manicured perfectly. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So I took a few pictures there. And when you're inside one of those wigwams, you are totally isolated from the outside world. There are a couple of little windows. I don't know if I took a picture of them or not, but. Yeah, there you go. So you can notice mm -hmm. how it's round. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very nicely appointed. You got a little couch there, and mm -hmm. um, I believe it had a refrigerator and a microwave. Mm -hmm. But if you close those windows, 
and the outside world is just gone. It just disappears. Mm. It's very quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. So I took a walk around. You know, I can't resist taking a picture of an old car. Right. Yeah. Yes. They tell. They tell stories. Don't. Oh. You tell. They just want another chance, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I oh, I like that pictures. photo. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Which one? This one here. The yeah. Night photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, and there's another one. There's the the moon, full oh. moon, right over the top of my TP there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then that's something. Well, I believe that finishes up week number four, um, Joe. So thanks for joining us again today and being with us and sharing your Route 66 road trip with us. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Again, it's just such an honor to to be able to tell my story. And I just mm -hmm. hope that everyone get out there and enjoy it. It's just such a wonderful experience. So thank you and join us next time as we continue to explore Route 66. Next time. I'd like to say thank you to our guests today. And also I wanna say thank you for watching my videos. Producing these videos is just my way of giving back to Route 66 and preserving this piece of Americana for the next generation. Now you can let me know that you appreciate these videos by just simply clicking on to this logo to subscribe to my channel. And of course, feel free to share these videos to your social media pages.